Hello! Today I shall be performing a monologue from my translation of Le Barbier de Sally by Pierre Augustin Caron de Beaumarchais, <laughs> first performed on the 23rd of February 1775, as we remember, all of you who did pre U level French with me. So this is a monologue which I have put together from scene one, scene two, and scene three of act two. What has previously happened, the given circumstances of this monologue, is that Rosine, my character, is being wooed by the disguised Count of well, Count Almaviva, rather. We don't know who, is, who he is Count of. Um, <laughs> but yes, the disguised Count Almaviva is wooing Rosine under the guise of a young student called Landor. And he has, but he has not dared to declare his love, so in truth, perhaps he's not wooing so much as sighing underneath her window. And the barber of Seville, Igao, is in this confidence, which Rosine suspects, but does not exactly know, and is trying to ascertain in this scene whether or not this man has any intentions towards her, when she herself is this very very, very much attractive to him. <sighs> anyway. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention. Rosine has a guardian. He is a skinflint, evil, horrible old man called uh, Dr. Bartolo. He is the doctor in Seville, and he is inept. There, he is the butt of many medical jokes, which you know, during the 18th and 17th century, quite fair medicine couldn't do very much for uh, for people then. But uh, yes, you know, he 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 totally deserves all the hate he gets. Um, although you can't help but feel sorry for him in some senses, because he is totally robbed at the end of the play. Well, not totally robbed. He gets to keep my diary. My dowry. Anyway, je commence. Marceline is ill. All the servants of the house are busy. And there is not a soul to see me writing. I don't know if the walls have eyes or ears, or if my Argus keeps a malevolent genie to inform him of every goings on. But I cannot say a word, nor make a step, but he will know what for. close this letter. Though heaven knows when and how I will get it to you. I 
I did see him out of my shutter talk with a long time with a barber Figaro. He is a good man, and one that has often taken pity on me. Oh, what would I give to have him here for a few minutes so I could talk with him? Oh! Why, Mr. Figaro, what a pleasure it is to see you. Please. young man with whom I saw you talking earlier outside on the street. I, I, I could not hear what you were saying, but he is called Landor. He is in love. And you call this a defect? Fortune is unkind. Oh. And uh, has he named the object of his love? But why? Is the careful? But you know that I am discreet. This gentleman is of your friends, and, and this affair interests me greatly. Oh, tell me, tell me, quickly, Monsieur Figaro, oh, if my guardian comes back, I shall never know. Please. Monsieur Figaro. Who? The ward of my guardian. Tremble, Monsieur Figaro. <sighs> if he loves me, he must maintain the utmost discretion. I. It is true that a young lady cannot stop her, an honest young man, from admiring her. But if he does something foolish, Monsieur Figaro, we shall all be lost. <sighs> I have not time to recommence this. But in giving it to him, tell him, please, tell him that it is purely out of friendship that I am doing this. No, purely out of friendship. I only fear that once he is faced with the obstacles... Oh heavens! I hear my guardian! Oh, he finds you here! Oh! Chiffy girl, go out by way of the cabinet with a harpsichord in it. Go swiftly and, and descend as quietly as you can. Oh, I am dying of 
red until he is outside. How I love him. My good Yao. He is a good friend. Truly an, an honest, trusty man. Oh, here comes my guardian. I must do my work.